Recently, I've been in San Diego at the Hilton Bayfront for a series of meetings to work collaboratively with other international colleagues on the next stage of the development of the Global Environmental Management Standard, ISO 14001. In this episode, I share some of the key points that are likely to impact on your environmental management system. You will want to catch up on all of the content of this episode. So let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the successful strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. The future of ISO 14001 is nearer than you may think. Find out more about why it's being updated, what issues may impact your environmental management system in this video over the next 10 minutes. I travelled to San Diego, California, on the west coast of the United States, to a city where the land meets the Pacific Ocean that is still an operational port, a city full of historic districts for the many tourists that meet there every year. The reason to be in such a lovely city was to meet up with other international technical experts to review the current development of an update to ISO 14001-2015, which is currently a committee draft to resolve comments made by national standardisation bodies such as BSI and ANSI, and looking forward to a wider commenting round later in 2024. This episode breaks down the current status of the revision process, covering why is there an update to 14001-2015 being developed, what can we expect from the update, and when can we expect the ISO 14001 to be amended. So, let's look at the reason for the update. In order to prepare for a potential revision, which could take place in as early as 2026, ISO reached out in conjunction with its committee experts to sound out the marketplace. The preparations included recommendations from a strategic planning study group looking at future challenges for the environmental management system standard, which sought to identify the future needs and potential direction for any possible revision of ISO 14001. This future scanning report on future challenges was followed up with feedback from a global user community around September 2021, which asked targeted four primary questions of interest covering what is the nature and extent of the value that users gain from ISO 14001 with regard to environmental management and business management? How can ISO 14001 and related standards be improved to address the needs and expectations of current and potential users? To what extent should ISO 14001 address or strengthen attention to future challenges, concepts and recommendations? And finally, to what extent are users interested in additional guidance in relation to specific environmental topic areas, such as demonstrated in the ISO 14002 guidance series? The user survey was finally published in 2023 and is freely available from the ISO website through a link in the accompanying article on the emsmastery.com website. Finally, the development takes into account the ISO directives on Annex SL changes, which prescribes 
a common high-level structure for all Type 1 management system standards, such as ISO 14001 and ISO 9001, to ensure a level of compatibility of the requirements for those users adopting two or more management systems within their organisation. Whilst the Annex SL is aimed at management system standards writers, it provides insight into changes for the ISO 14001 update, and it can include clarity that where many requirements in the harmonised structure use the verb determine, management system standards writers should be aware that this does not specifically require documented information to be available as evidence of conformity. The use of the phrase, the documented information is available, for when documents should be maintained and the documented information shall be available as evidence to indicate the retention of a record. There are, of course, many other changes to the presentation and clarification. A copy of the latest version of Annex SL Appendix 2, which is a normative requirement and provides the harmonised structure for management system standards with guidance for, for their use, can be freely downloaded from the ISO website. A link to this uh, Annex SL document is in the accompanying article on the emsmastery.com website. If you're getting value out of this episode, please click on the like button and if you want to see more environmental and sustainability videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to ensure that you won't miss out on other new episodes. So, what can we expect? The updating of ISO 14001 2015 is designed to clarify the intent behind key requirements and to provide additional guidance. The drafting has looked at seven specific themes identified to further explore and clarify the requirements of ISO 14001, namely alignment of strategy, business processes and an integrated management system approach, understanding context and risks and opportunities, the life cycle perspective, highlighting technical topics as the ISO 14002 series develops guidance in aspects such as climate, waste and water, external reporting, engagement and the culture of environmental responsibility, outsource processes and the supply chain. The ISO 14001-2015 update will follow the earlier amendment on climate change. See my video here and in the description box below. The overall objective of this update is to ensure that the existing requirements are understood in the correct manner to support organisations with implementation of their EMS. It is not certain whether the update will be a standard which, together with ISO 14001-2015, and the current Amendment 1 on climate change have to be read together to understand the requirements, or whether it will be published as a consolidated version incorporating the current ISO 14001-2015 and the two amendments together in one document. So, what can we expect from the ISO 14001 update? The timeline has already been started by the ISO Technical Committee TC207 SC1 through the development of a working group 15 with initial meetings 
from September 2023 to February 2024. Out of these initial meetings, the discussions led to a committee draft, which was circulated for comment within the ISO committee TC207 SC1 between March and April 2024. The ballot and comments were reviewed at San Diego as a process of disposition to accept, accept with amendments or reject any given comment based on its validity against the requirements of the revision process. This process is anticipated to take place over the period from May to July 2024 and is anticipated to lead to a draft international standard. Between August and December 2024, it is anticipated that the draft international standard will be open for further balloting with ISO members and a commenting period within ISO members together with a public consultation following by further meetings to allow disposition of any new comments by the working group between January and June 2025. Out of this process, it is anticipated that a final draft international standard for a final ballot period will occur between June and August 2025. Any comments at this stage will not change the requirements or introduce new requirements, but is designed to correct any obvious grammatical spelling or errors in the document. This process is intended to be undertaken in September 2025. And finally, the output from this rather long process will lead to the final publication of the update to ISO 14001, which is anticipated to take place in October 2025. All the information presented in this episode is given in a link in the description box below to an accompanying article linking all of the resources together on the emsmastery.com website. If this episode has helped to advance your understanding of the development of the update of ISO 14001-2015, please leave a comment in the box below if this video has helped you. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes on environmental management and sustainability by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right. And to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.